Welcome to Stab Comedy Theater. It's time for Camp with Drew Abjur. Please welcome the stage. Drew Abjur. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Camp. I'm Drew Abjur. Let's do this right. Uh, uh, Jesse, we might need the other flashlight. This thing's a piece of shit. Uh, Don't buy flashlights from Target. That's really the main point of the show. Um, yeah, I'm afraid. This one's scary. Ooh, this one's bright as shit. How's everybody doing? Good? I'm going to explain the show while I retape the flashlight to the microphone. Why am I doing this? Because I'm a hack, and I need a shtick for the show to work. So we tape a flashlight so it looks like we're telling scary stories around the campfire. Yeah! This doesn't count as the start of the show, by the way. This doesn't count. Yeah, there we go. That'll work. This doesn't count. It just doesn't (laughs) count. Absolutely doesn't count. Oh, God, I taped the button. What a fucking moron. What just an absolute... Oh, there we go. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to camp. I'm Drew Absher. God damn it. Uh, I taped a button. God damn it. Um, wouldn't this be hilarious if this was all planned? Like we'd, we're doing a who's on first type sketch right now, me and Jesse? No, hold on. It's a G spot. You just got to find it and then ask her if it's there. I've had more fun trying to find a lost dog. Uh, <laughs> Nope, hold on. You know what? We're going no fucking flashlight. <laughs> Fuck this show. Dude, this is a mess. Why do I do this? Do you guys realize how many decisions I'm reconsidering right now? I'm like, should I have tried to go back to college? Uh, all right. All right. Here we go. Give me this. You going to try it again? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, wait, wh- oh. why is it on like strobe? Like I'm trying to wave down a police officer. <laughs> there you go. All right. Okay. Yeah, something like that. There it is. God damn it, I hit the button. Ah! Ah, seizure! (laughs) Okay. All right. All right. Hey, everybody, welcome to camp with Drew Absher. I'm Drew Absher. How's it going? Yeah. All right. Good news. Uh, Bad news, you guys had to watch that happen. Good news is we have a great show for you, and I've got some treats here. Um, I made some brown or uh, some s'mores bites we're going to pass out. Um, I got some... These are called Brookies. Uh, these are brownie cookies. I work at Trader Joe's. I probably shouldn't say that before what I'm about to tell you guys. Uh, so I'm going to hand out these s'mores. And then I got some apple cider donuts, if that interests anybody. Yeah, dude, we're doing this right. Tell your friends so we can sell the next one out. That'd be nice. Um, cool. Sir, you're in charge of opening those and passing them around. And then don't be worried about the fog on this. Uh, Start that one at the back row. Pass it around. There's like, we got a couple donuts. Hell yeah. Welcome to camp with Drew Absher. Um Oh yeah, I also got almond butter cups. You know, Trader Joe's just does everything differently. Um, <laughs> my name is Drew Absher. The point of the show is I got a bunch of my comedian friends. We're all going to tell uh, our version of a scary story. Whatever the word scary means to us, um, that's what we're going to tell. Uh, the story I'm going to tell, I have to ask... First off, uh, is anyone in here in the medical profession? (laughs) Is anybody? Are you? Okay, your mouth has to stay quiet for the entire story because I think you're going to be able to tell the end. Uh, No one else, right? No one else is a nurse or just spends a lot of time at the hospital. No one like that. Okay, cool. Uh, So, yeah, I went through a breakup earlier this year. I got dumped by my my ex-girlfriend, and uh, someone woohooed that. That's fucking mean. Um... (laughs) <laughs> I got I got dumped by my ex girlfriend and it's fine like we were together for two and a half years uh, and like I don't know the weird thing about hey welcome on in uh, you guys d- missed absolutely no technical difficulties uh, everything went smooth from the top of the show no issues that's whatsoever come on front row oh you got how did you come in here with the donut what the fuck <laughs> this is insane even I don't know how to control my show um what you guys missed. Uh, this is Camp with Drew Absher. We're going to tell scary stories. I went through a breakup this year. 
we're all caught up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's some there's some treats going around. I hope you guys didn't blow your appetite on those donuts. Uh, so yeah, we were together for two and a half years, and the thing about a, a relationship that long is that like, I don't. The only way I could explain it to somebody is like it felt like I bought uh, like a nightstand from IKEA or like a TV stand. You know what I mean? And like, it, because like at first I didn't speak the language that the instructions were in. I had no idea what I was doing. I was like guessing the entire way. And then after a certain point, it started to look like a TV stand. You know what I mean? I could recognize this. I was like, oh shit, I'm building a TV stand. Like this is actually going to be a nice TV stand. And then like two years in, I'm like, dude, this TV stand, it's going to hold my TV for the rest of my life. Like my parents are going <laughs> to watch TV on this TV stand, you know? And then like about two and a half years in, like, I was like, did I fuck something up? Like, this TV stand doesn't look right anymore. You know what I mean? I didn't recognize this TV stand anymore. And so I'm, like, looking at the TV stand, and the TV stand's looking at me. And then I read the box, and in fine print on the Ikea box, it said, warning, this TV stand might decide it's a lesbian. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> you guys know what breakups are like, right? That's how they are. Uh, So I'm go I went through a breakup, and uh, I'm 24 years old, and I never had, like, a crazy phase. You know, like, kids call it a hoe phase now. I never had a hoe phase. <laughs> if you don't know what a hoe phase is, you know, come on, put some puzzle pieces together here. Uh, I can't do it all for you. So I never had a hoe phase. So I was like, this is going to be my time to be a fucking animal, you know? And uh, so that's what I did. I just went... And I just, anything that moved, I was trying to fuck it, you know? And it's not healthy. It's not a good way to live. I'm not doing that anymore, ladies. Um, I'm, I'm a good guy now. And, uh, <laughs> and so I found myself in some weird situations. And uh, this is one, and I'm only telling this story because I run this show. And also, I think that we should tell this story to men more often, okay? I don't think we know enough about our bodies. And so I'm going to educate us tonight. So I never really smoked weed a lot either. That was also important to know. So I was going completely buck wild. And I met up with this girl from Tinder. And um, we, you know, we were, she was like, oh, do you smoke? And I was like, I had ego. So I was like, fuck yeah, dude. Are you kidding me? Like I, all the time. And she was like, cool, bring your vape pen. And I only got the vape pen because I ha also have anxiety and it helps me sleep. So I was like, dude, fuck yeah. I'll have to go buy another cartridge, you know? Like, and so <laughs> I brought the vape pen to her house. And we, like, take way too many hits off the vape pen for me. She was totally fine. <laughs> and I'm in fucking outer space. <laughs> and so we have sex, and then um, I we have sex with a condom because, you know, not that crazy of a hoe phase. And I come in the condom, and then she's like, I'll take it to the bathroom. I got to go pee. And I take the condom off, and as I'm handing it to her, I'm looking at the condom. I'm high as shit. And I'm handing it to her, and I'm like, that looks like tinted or something. You're like, that condom looks weird. And I was like, that's weird. It had like a like a, a like a orangish, reddish hue to it. I'm like, that's weird. So I hand it to her, and she goes to the bathroom and puts it away. And then, um, oh, okay, there we go. We're back. Uh, and I'm like, okay. So I was like, I got to go home. And so I drove home high as shit. I've never driven high before. Uh, I've never done it since. It's the biggest mistake I ever made in my life is driving home. Um, <laughs> and uh, But I couldn't spend the night there. It was just not a good situation. So I drive home. And I get home. And I go to pee uh, with a, a mouthful of trail mix. and Because I was high as fuck. Uh, and as I'm peeing, I look down. And the toilet bowl is completely red. Yeah, and it was definitely blood. I don't know how I knew Im immediately it was blood, but I spit trail mix everywhere. Like, I had to, <laughs> like, there was raisins in the fucking trash can. And I'm like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. So I immediately email my doctor on Kaiser. And <laughs> <laughs> if you want some advice, never email your doctor when you're that high. Because I just said, in th I'm not making this up. My first email to my doctor was, I just came blood. Is that normal? Which you can talk to your doctor however you want, just not like that, you know? <laughs> like, they're not cool with you talking to them like that. 
So yeah, so what I had kind of started piecing together in my highness, like I was doing like a memento style piecing together of the night, and I realized that what had happened was when I came, there was blood in that condom. That's why it had that tint to it. How the girl I had sex with didn't notice, I have no idea, but she didn't say anything. And so I was like, what the fuck? So I was like freaking out. And I went to bed, and then when I woke up, I was like, I got to re-email my doctor. I can't let her... I can't let her see that first thing in the morning, you know what I mean? Like, she needs to see the second email first before she sees the first one. So I wake up in the morning, and I'm like, well, let me Google this. Let me see what this is. Maybe there's some explanation for it, you know? And, sir, be quiet here. Uh, Does anyone have a guess as to what the first thing that comes up when you Google blood and semen is on Google? It's not something, like... Gross. It's like an actual medical thing. Anyone got a guess? Infection. Infection? No, that's not the first thing that comes up. Anyone? No? That's not a bad guess either, though. <laughs> Think WebMD. What is WebMD? The first thing that comes up is testicular cancer. <laughs> yeah. The second thing that comes up is prostate cancer. The third thing that comes up, not a fucking thing. Those are the only two things that come up. So now I'm in my head going, like, which would be better to have, testicular or prostate? I'm like, I could figure out how to learn to ride a bike. I'll take testicular, you know? (laughs) And so I'm convinced at fucking 7 a.m. on a Saturday that I have testicular cancer. And I'm like, I guess I I think I'll look okay with a bald head. You know what I think? I think I'll be able to pull it off. So I email my doctor. And... I don't know why, but doctors take forever to email back. So I re-email her, and I'm like, hey, um, I had protected sex last night, and when I took the condom off, I noticed that there was some red in it, and then when I came home and urinated, blah, 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 right? I didn't mention the trail mix. Uh, (laughs) She didn't need to know about that. And I get a response back, uh, and sorry if this is anticlimactic, no pun intended, but she just goes, yeah, that's called hematomaspermia. It's a totally common thing. If you have blood in your cum, it's not a big thing at all, actually. Most likely what happened is while you were sleeping, you squished your balls in the middle of the night, and that was your body's way of releasing the blood. I was like, dude, put that on a fucking sign in your office or something. (laughs) How is that not the first thing they teach you in sex head class? Like, okay, fellas, if you ever cum blood, no big deal. Just shake it off. Dude, I was, I was telling people I had testicular cancer. That's how deep. This was two days later she emailed back. Anyway, that was my, the scariest uh, two days of my entire life. My name's Drew Absher. We got a great show for you. Make it real loud for your next comedian, a very good friend of mine. Make it loud for Jason B., everybody. morning. <laughs> I, uh, scary story. This story takes place on a, a sultry evening in Florida. I was 17 years old. And, uh, I was working at the time at one of those go-kart mini golf laser tag arcade places. <laughs> you know, I'm sure there's one here that's been closed since I used to work at one. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. They're good places. Um, You can drink there and shit (laughs) when you're working, not just if you're hanging out. (laughs) So I I get to this place. I'm 30 minutes late. I was not a good employee. I was a 17-year-old punk rock kid. And uh, they fire me when I get there. And uh, it's just getting dark. So I I hitchhike home. This is where shit gets scary, right? So I'm out on the highway ramp waiting, and a dude pulls over kind of look in the corner from the back as I'm walking up. He just looks like an older, middle-aged white guy, kind of harmless. I'm like, all right, I'll get in the car with him. I get in and sit down, and I look over, and he's fucking plastered. He's got half a bottle of vodka in his lap, half an eaten pizza in the back seat, joint roach is wasted, and he takes off before I can be like, hey, maybe. <laughs> so we're cruising down the highway, and he proceeds to tell me this story about how he left his old lady, took all her money, 
her car and all her shit because she cheated on him and he was driving to Miami to start a new life. We were going north. <laughs> he picked me up fucking going north. So we keep heading towards wherever the fuck Miami is and he's telling me about how I need God and how he needs God. So I start drinking with him because I'm terrified. <laughs> You know how, I don't know if anyone has an aggressive, aggressive kitchen person. Like, my mom was very aggressive in the kitchen. Like, she spoke with her hands. When if she was holding a knife, she spoke with that, too. And she'd be like, she'd be like go to your room. Like, yeah. This guy had a gun that he was doing that with, also. He was getting passionate about it. Like, he was like, I almost killed her. I got this. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, man? It's, it's fucking terrifying. So we're cruising cruising towards wherever the fuck North Miami is on Highway 528. I didn't tell him he was going the wrong way. I didn't have the heart. <laughs> like I didn't even know. This guy's telling me his story, and I couldn't even go. I was afraid to say the word to go, that's crazy. <laughs> like I just want to be like, that's, that's wild, dude. This guy was so scary, I was sure if I said crazy, he was going to be like, who's crazy? <laughs> Don't call me crazy. So finally, I, I am terrified enough that I go, hey, this is, this is my exit. This is where I'm going, dude. And he asks me if I'm sure. <laughs> so he knows I'm fucking bullshitting. So we pull off. We get into this Amico parking lot, right? And as I go to get out, he grabs my hand. And he goes, wait, do you need a couple hundred dollars? I was so fucking terrified by this man. I looked at him and went, no. I'm good. As I go to get out of the car, he opens the glove box and cash just falls out into the car. And he reaches around, digs out a bunch of cash and pulls out a Bible and goes, take this. And I said, no, I think you probably need it. <laughs> I don't know how to end this story. Because that's what happened. I feel like if you weren't in the car with the incredibly intoxicated middle-aged white man that you've never met before, swerving in and out of lanes of traffic in the middle of the evening while he's headed to Miami, I wonder where the fuck he ended up. <laughs> <laughs> I think about that guy to this day. I've never really told that story except for like a couple times at a party to people because it's not th that interesting. <laughs> but I've very rarely been that terrified in my life. I've been in like bar brawls and gang fights, but there's something terrifying about drunk middle-aged white men. Like we all saw Joker. <laughs> like <laughs> so, some people say it like glorifies like, you know, what's wrong with white men. I think it just kind of is like, look at that. That's what you look out for. <laughs> it doesn't glorify it. It's like a perfect warning. It's like that's what they're doing. <laughs> that's scary. I'm Jason B. Thank you so much for listening to my somewhat scary story. Here's Drew Absher. Yeah, Jason B., everybody, yeah. It's just a masterful, you just got to close your eyes as you're grabbing the microphone to leave here with vision. That's the only tip for the comics. Uh, where did the treats end up? Is everyone full? Does, everyone, does anyone want an extra of something? Donuts? We got, what's that? A uh, brookie? Is that the brookies? Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> also, how are we doing on drinks? Does anyone need a beer or something like that? Okay, okay. An almost doesn't count. Uh, all right. You guys ready for your next comedian? All right. Make some fucking noise. That's all you guys have to do for that. Yeah, make some noise for your next comedian. Oh, fuck. I did, this. I did the flashy one. God damn it. Uh, make it real loud for Lendy West, everybody. Hi guys, can I, I don't even know how it's scary to hold it up to your face. Um, I'm going to tell you guys a story that didn't happen to me, but I heard it in the course of like six months and it happened to a client of mine. Um, it's very Dateline worthy, but it wasn't on Dateline because no one died. Um, <laughs> although it could, oh, ooh, okay, sorry, I was having a 
flashlight issues. Um, so this happened about 12 years ago in a little town called Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, I had a client and she lived uh, in Sandpoint, Idaho, where um, I was doing her hair. And then she moved to the big city of Coeur d'Alene, which was about 45 miles away. And, um, but she was still coming back to see me every like eight weeks to do her hair. And um, so the first time after she moved, I uh, was like, hey, how, how do you like living in Coeur d'Alene? She said, I found this really cute apartment. It's in one of those houses that got transformed into four apartments, right? Like kind of down here. There's a lot of those down here in Sacramento. Um, and she said, my neighbors are all very quiet. I really like them. Um, I'm having the time of my life in this podunky town. And um, next time she comes in, she says, my house is kind of creepy, but I think it's because it's old. Next time she comes in, she says, I'm pretty sure my place is haunted. <laughs> and I say, how so? And she says, well, um, I just feel like people are watching me in my apartment all the time. And I was like, what do you mean? She goes, well, like in my kitchen, I feel like someone's always watching me cook. And she goes, sometimes when I'm in the shower, I feel like someone's there with me. And she's like, like I'll open the curtain and no one's there, but I just feel like someone's watching me. And then she, uh, and then she said same thing with like her living room. And then at night she said, I wake up and I just feel like, oh my God, someone's in my room with me. And um, next time she comes in, she says, I'm trying to set up the ghost because sh shit's moving around in my house. And she was like, um, I tried putting like, I'll leave the closet door closed and then it'll be cracked when I come home from work. And um, what was another one? Uh, something, leaving stuff around the kitchen and the living room, objects will be moved. And so she was like, I know the ghosts are in my house and they're moving stuff. And she talked to like one of her neighbors, which was an old lady and the old lady was like, girl, you crazy. And, um, <laughs> and the next time she comes in, it was of course, she was just like, you will never believe what the fuck happened to me. So it's been about like six months since she's lived in this house. And she says, uh, she brings home her first gentleman friend, okay? They're making out on her bed. Things are getting hot and heavy when suddenly a man emerges from her closet and starts yelling, who the fuck is this guy? You slut, what is this? I thought you were mine. And it was her neighbor across the way. I know, right? So what ended up happening? <laughs> <laughs> they, I know, so her gentleman friend, her gentleman friend, um, the one she wanted to be with, um, he of course was like, yeah, what the fuck is going on, you slut? Who the hell is this guy in your closet? <laughs> and then um, they called the police. <laughs> and then uh, the police showed up. The dude had built a cr in the crawl space from his apartment across the way, crawled across and drilled holes in all of her, like in the bathroom, there was like two holes in the bathroom. I know there was like three holes in the kitchen. There were several holes in the uh, over her bed. It was freaking creepy. And then he cut out a hole in her closet and was going in and like mouth breathing over her at night. So when she woke up, she was like, oh, my God, someone's in the room because someone was. How scary. <laughs> um, yeah. And that was uh, terrifying to hear. Um, she was in really good spirits. He went to jail, right? Idaho. It was, that is some Idaho shit. I, I, I lived in Idaho for eight years and I have never heard crazier ways of people dying. Um, super creepy stalker stories. That one was the ultimate, but there are like a lot of, um, I think because uh, Idaho is full of dudes, it's a sausage fest, and <laughs> dudes get really desperate when a girl comes along. <gasps> they just want, I just want her to be mine. Um, I came out of the woods just to see her. Uh, <laughs> or her closet, whichever one. Um, but yeah, that guy went to jail for some time. That was 12 years ago, so he's probably out in the dating field now, ladies.
probably he's probably in Montana now. He's probably like, I can't go. I ruined my Idaho hookups. I got to go to Montana or Wyoming. But yeah, that was the scariest thing I'd ever heard because I cannot freaking imagine um, making out with a dude and then having another dude come out of my closet and be like, hey, that's Terry from across the hall. <laughs> I see him every time I get my mail. All right, you guys. <laughs> Thanks for hearing my scary story. It's okay. Let's see if we get strobe. Oh, no, we're all good. Lundy West, everybody. Hell yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. I didn't even know that was a crime. I have some life changes to make. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I like the lady who said, what do you say? <laughs> you don't want to hear. Uh, you guys, we're going to keep the show. How are we doing on beer? Everyone okay? Oh, that's a... That's the saddest noise I've ever heard. <laughs> Does someone need another beer? Okay, do you have cash or card? Okay, cool. We're good. No, we got to get everyone liquored up. These stories will get much better the later we go into the show. All right, you guys ready for your next comedian? This, n this next comedian, he's a very funny guy. I'm super happy to have him on the show. Make it real loud for Colin Waters, everybody. Oh, he got cut off as he's coming to the stage. I'm already, I'm already fucking blind. It doesn't matter. Oh, I'm actually scared right now. Holy shit. <laughs> My heart is racing. That was a terrifying story. How do you follow that? Um, no, so five, six years ago, roughly, I was newly single. And uh, I was in a very serious relationship. Um, I loved her. Things were going great. We were at a bar one night, and she asked me, out of the blue, she goes, how many kids do you think you want? And I said, I had less than one. <laughs> and I don't know if you could tell, but that was not the answer she was looking for. <laughs> so uh, the best part about that story is I'm actually married to her now. <laughs> and we have two kids. And I don't know how good you are at math, but that is a lot more than less than one. <laughs> so I lost, fuck me, right? <laughs> But uh, anyway, we were, uh, we were separated for a few days, so I was like, okay, it's probably time to get back on the horse, right? <laughs> Let's do this. So um, I was on the prowl, as they say. Uh, what, that's actually a creepier way of saying I was f Facebook creeping people. Um, but I was reading a post a friend made, and there was a comment, and I saw this super cute girl. And I was like, hey, let's see what's going on here. So I click on her profile. I knew immediately that we were going to get along. I was like, she's great. She's perfect. And the only reason why I thought that was because she had huge tits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I knew we were going to be a match. It's perfect. Um, so I had had two or 11 whiskeys. I don't remember. <laughs> and uh, I decided I'm going to, okay, fuck it. I'm going to add her as a friend. Let's do it. So I do, and five minutes later, boom, we're friends. And I'm like, hey, strike while the iron's hot, right? Let's send her a message. So I thought about it for a while. I was like, I've got to be smooth. And I was like, hey, <laughs> what's up? And we chit-chat. And it actually goes really well. Like, we hit it off. We had some mutual friends. Uh, and two days later, we were at a brewery having a beer. I'm like, this is great. And I don't know if you can tell because it's dark in here, but there is a light on my face. Not a super attractive man. I look a bit like a box troll. But... <laughs> I'm charming, and I charmed her pants off, literally. <laughs> so, and um, I did my signature move, which is coming immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, but I, so, right? And uh, everybody was happy. We texted uh, back and forth for a couple days, uh, but on the third day, I got violently ill. The sickest I have ever been in my entire life. I couldn't eat. I couldn't swallow. It hurt to drink water. My body ached. I had the a terrible fever, night sweats. Uh, my tongue was white. So I was like, okay, fuck. Uh, so I did what I had health insurance. I'm like, I'm going to do what any responsible adult with health insurance should do. And I Googled all my symptoms. <laughs> so <laughs> first result. Lists, 
fever, night sweats. Oh, I forgot to tell you, explosive diarrhea, uh, white tongue, body pains, symptoms of HIV slash AIDS. Fuck! My life is over. I was so scared. Instantly, my heart threw my asshole. It's done. There's My friends are never going to talk to me again. My parents will never look at me the same. My life is... Now, this was a few years ago. Now, AIDS is kind of like, well, I got a pretty good shot. All right? But this was six years ago. It was a different time. <laughs> so... I, t for 48 hours, I just sat in that, thinking my life was over. What am I going to fucking do? And then I'm like, you know what? I have to get tested. I got to find out if this is for real or not. The worst, most gut-wrenching drive of my life. There were multiple times when I was like, what if I just let go of the wheel? Like, see what happens. <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe this would be better. So I get there, and like, I want to throw up. I'm just dying. So I finally get inside. I'm like, please give me one of the, t the tests, whatever you do. As as I've never been here before. <laughs> and for some reason, I grabbed a handful of free condoms. <laughs> like, <laughs> what the fuck is the matter with you? Guess I will. Um, and so I wait a while. I go in there. It's gut-wrenching. They do all their tests. And she goes, okay, you will get your results within three to 60 days. And I was like, three to 60 days? Holy shit. What kind of place is this? She's like, it's a free STD clinic, you fucking idiot. <laughs> what do you expect? So I go home, another probably solid 12 hours of just wallowing in depression. I'm like, you know what, I should, I should make a doctor appointment. Let's go see the doctor. I get one a couple days later. A few hours before I'm supposed to go to the doctor, I decide to reach out to the girl. I haven't talked to her since I got sick. Um, she's, I say, hey, what's up? And she texts back. She's like, good, it's good to hear from you. And the next thing I said was, have you been tested recently? <laughs> and she calls me up. She calls me immediately. She goes, what the fuck is going on? I said, oh, uh, have, you, did, have you been tested recently? <laughs> and she goes, of course I have. What are you saying? And I'm like, have you had an HIV slash AIDS test recently? <laughs> and she, long silence. <laughs> long silence. And she goes, you are seriously accusing me of giving you the worst STD a person could possibly get. You are the biggest piece of shit I have ever met in my life. Never talk to me again. Click! So I am going to die a big monster piece of shit. Uh, but So I go to the doctor. And you know how the doctor goes. It was miserable. Waited in there for you know, at least 45 minutes. She comes in, and then she just starts reading me my symptoms. You know, fever, diarrhea, white tongue, body pains, night sweats. I'm like, I, I told you that. <laughs> I don't need to know. Give me some. I'm going to run some tests. It's like, okay. She swabs my mouth, does some other bullshit, and then she disappears for 45 more minutes. And she comes back, and the first thing she says to me is, she goes, are you sexually active? It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And she's like, have you performed oral sex on anyone recently? Of course. <laughs> and she goes, okay. Uh, and I finally, I was just like, do I have AIDS? Like, She goes, okay, listen. You have oral thrush in your mouth. She goes, that happens when you give oral sex and they have a yeast infection. And you also have the swine flu because you didn't come get your fucking vaccination, you idiot. <laughs> and I have... <laughs> Guys, that's what... You've been good. Hold on, everybody. Fuck yeah. <laughs> you know what's the crazy part of that story is Colin now has HIV. He got it after him. It's, I know. I said, be careful. Um, <laughs> all right. I know that was not a nice joke to make, but, you know. Anyway, make it real loud for your next comedian. She runs a show called Living Room Live. You can see it every, it'll be the 22nd of this month. Make it real loud for Ruby Setnik. Can I have a different mic? Jesus. Oral thrush, okay? <laughs> Okay, you guys. Um, 
this is a story um, of how I lost my virginity. Um, and it is also the story of how I found out uh, that I was Jewish. And it's the same story. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. Um, so the event itself uh, happened at the house that I lived in in high school. Um, me and my family had already moved out of the house. Uh, and there are two key points to this. There's one key point to this story. Like I said, or I haven't said that yet. Sorry, it's all typed out, you guys. It's going to be rough. Uh, I, uh, I, I didn't have sex in that house once while I lived there. And then I moved out, right? And then a week after moving out of it, I had sex in that house five times. <laughs> which is kind of like owning a book for four years, never reading it, giving it to a friend so that they can read it, and then a week later, stealing it back, and then having sex with the book. <laughs> it's just very neurotic behavior, right? Okay, but before I talk about that, I have to talk about uh, this guy who I lost my virginity to. He was, um, he was my first boyfriend, and I mean, he wasn't like, my boyfriend, technically, but like for all intents and purposes, in purposes, you know what I mean. Like, like it would be weird if I called him what he was, you know, my uncle. But um, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, he was, he was, uh, he was, um, he was the first guy. He was the first guy that I was ever with, and I, I've actually since then never been with someone so young, like 35, you know. <laughs> Um, no, he was 17. Uh, he was my uncle. Uh, <laughs> um, we weren't related, but uh, we are both Jews, uh, so maybe. Um, so uh, we met. <laughs> we met the summer before, and we met because we were both working uh, at the summer camp. And uh, he knew no one. Oh, and he knew no one put me in a corner but it was fine because it was outdoors. Dirty dancing, anyone? No? Okay. Um, so, so we had this sort of awkward summer romance, right? Except every night it would only ever go so far because I, I was a virgin, right? But I didn't want to tell him. So I would like find excuses to leave. And at first the excuses were pretty standard. Like I'm tired, I'm not feeling well. But after a certain point I started to run out of excuses. So the things I was coming up with were getting weird and like making less sense. And, and a while back we were catching up and I was telling him about this and he was like, oh, so that's why you told me you had to pee and that that would probably take all night. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Um, <laughs> so at a certain point uh, that summer, he just addressed it head on. He was like, are you a virgin, right? And I fancied myself a feminist, so I was like, virginity is a social construct. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm a person, all right? <laughs> and then he was like, are you a virgin? I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, and so, so the rest of the summer goes by and nothing happens. Oh, and also something I forgot to mention, at this camp we both taught uh, improv to children. So if you're looking for the bad guy in this story, it's everyone. Um, <laughs> so the summer ends, and, and we're being very dramatic, right? We exchanged our favorite podcasts and Green Day trivia and pubes or whatever. And, <laughs> and, then, and then we didn't see each other again uh, until Christmas time, uh, or as us Jews would call it, um, time. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like that one too. Um, <laughs> uh, when we had just, when okay, right. So it's Christmas time, and this is just after me and my parents had moved out of my high school house, right, and uh, into a new house. And he was staying with me, and we decided to have sex. Except we couldn't because my parents were home, and I was like, you know what? I know a place. <laughs> it's definitely empty. <laughs> and. Uh, so now we're all cut up. We sneak out of my new house to break into my old house. Don't yawn audibly. Are you f <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> it's just about to get good, okay? We sneak out of my new house to break into my old house. Uh, 
around the backs of middle-aged people to have sex with each other, which was just a fun sentence to write. <laughs> um, we get there, we break in, we do it in the kitchen, and then three minutes later, about two minutes after he comes, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I heard my mother's voice. It's just, it just helps me come. Just kidding, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, no, I, she, she was on to us the whole time. I, um, and what my mother's voice was saying uh, was from the other room, yeah, I think I found him, right, <laughs> on the phone. So my mom was on to us. She comes into the kitchen, and here's the scary part of the story. Um, my mom was not even mad that we had clearly, like, moved behind her back, or that we were having sex, or... Th or that we had like broken into the house. She was mad um, that we didn't put a towel down. <laughs> so that's how I found out I was Jewish. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. happened up here there we go uh you guys ready how was everyone doing we're good we're all right bad news all the snacks are gone as far as i can tell unless you guys are hoarding some over there um there's one donut oh shit let's have an audience fight for it yeah right street fight uh no uh we're not gonna do that who wants a donut does anyone want a donut one person wooed ruby wants it Hell yeah, that's a real comedian right there. Take the free food. All right, we're gonna we're gonna keep this show rolling. I got two more comedians for you guys, two very good friends of mine. Your next comedian, uh, we have a podcast together. It's called Fill My Heart. It's a Dr. Phil recap podcast. You can get it wherever you get podcasts at. It's a good time. Make it real loud for my buddy Parker Newman, everybody. Ah, <laughs> too late. Okay. <laughs> What is up, guys? This is this is how you do it. Am I doing it right? I don't think I'm doing it. Okay. <laughs> right. Cool. Now you can see my double chin. That's perfect. Um, I. <laughs> oh man. This is uh yeah. For the record, uh, I was told other people would dress up tonight. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> the fuck that was, but. <laughs> Drew, yeah, this feels like a prank, honestly. <laughs> it's, yeah, uh, I'm Freddy Krueger. If you, if you didn't guess, um, I'm. Here's a twist, though. I'm Freddy Krueger before he got put in a boiler. So, <laughs> so I'm just like a really witty pedophile. That's my thing. Is that? <laughs> That's why catch a predator is a thing because they don't know their way around a joke. They can't get out of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, I'm really good at quitting jobs. Um, <laughs> it's probably uh, my top five things I'm best at. Um, like, <laughs> so like one time I uh, I used to work for Roundtable, two of them. But um, <laughs> one though specifically, I I went in one day to tell them that I wanted more hours because I only got like. 12 a week and it's like fuck that that's not even worth it you know so i went and talked to my manager and uh, just as i was talking to him these two ladies run in and one of them says oh my god there's a guy outside with a gun you should probably lock the doors right which is still like pretty passive aggressive <laughs> like for an emergency <laughs> you know well she'd been like earthquake everyone Duck and cover if you want, like, you know, like, there's, there's a fire, get the fuck out if you so inquire, like, it's very, like, um, and so, uh, anyway, I run to uh, this room, I thought it was an emergency exit, because uh, it said emergency exit, but <laughs> uh, I guess a fucking clown works here or something, I don't know, because I, I walked in there, and like there was, uh, it's just a storage room, right? And uh, yeah, it's a storage room. <laughs> and there was, uh, there was, uh, so basically all that was in the room was an emergency exit and I could not like go back in the door I just came in through. There's like no handle on the other side, right? 
So, yeah, I thought there was like a gunman shooting people. So I uh, called 911 like a snitch. And I, <laughs> yeah, I let you down, Tupac. And I, um, <laughs> and so I, <laughs> uh, I called 911 and I just said, hey, just so you know, uh, I told her everything, and I said, just so you know, if you find a scared, chubby Jewish guy <laughs> who looks like the shooter, <laughs> it's probably just me. <laughs> like, <laughs> There's not two. I know that that's a conspiracy. That happens a lot. It's just the one guy. <laughs> but yeah, and so like I'm on the phone, uh, and it like it's a while. It's like 15 minutes, and she just says, like, uh, like nothing really, you know, not really giving me details of what's going on. So I'm like, dude, are like the cops here? Like, are they are they on their way? Like, what's going on? And she said, I don't know. I'm not there with you, am I? I swear to God, <laughs> she said. <laughs> and I'm like, this is not the time to be a bitch. Like, this is, it's just, it's not the time. I'm like, I'm not your boyfriend. What are you doing? <laughs> like. Like she might as well have just said like I like I don't know I bet one of your whores would know like <laughs> where the police are <laughs> like it's just super intense <laughs> and uh, so anyway uh, yeah uh, eventually a couple minutes later she uh, tells me okay it's uh it, they're saying that they got the guy it's okay to come out so I go out um, and I talk to the cop and uh, right. And uh, then my manager comes up to me, right? And I'm just like, oh, he's gonna like be like, dude, what? Ha like, we're okay. I, I hope you're okay. He just looks at me and he goes like, dude, why'd you go through the emergency exit, <laughs> right? Because like the alarm went off and shit. And he's like, I don't have a key. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> like, I thought I was gonna die. And I swear to God, he said. Yeah, but still, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> yeah. He looked at me like you were going to die anyway. Like, you could not have fucked with my door. Um, <laughs> and so, <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, it said, it's the emergency exit, blah, 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 um, right? And so then, sorry, this light's blunting the shit out of me. Holy fuck. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, sorry, I lost my place. Where was I? Oh, emergency exit. That's it. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah. It's crazy. I actually used it for an emergency. That never happens. Normally, when I get catfished, that's when I go out. <laughs> that's <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, uh, I'm talking to cop. Go over. Uh, we tried to find the girl, right? Because we have no idea where she went, right? So I walk into... Uh, the party room, right? They have a party room there. And I walk into the party room with the cop, and there's, like, a black family of, like, 30 people. And I just feel like the biggest piece of shit. <laughs> like, I'm like, they're having a barbecue. Like, you know? <laughs> like, that's what it feels like. <laughs> like, I just feel like, you know, white guilt kicks in. And then uh, I see the girl, though, right? And I, I, it's very dramatic. I just go, it was you. Like, <laughs> Like she's a killer or something? <laughs> like, like it's a murder mystery? Like, <laughs> like oh, this was a ruse. You just uh, wanted a free salad bar, like or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, and so I uh, anyway, uh, we uh, yeah, we're talking to the cop, and uh, and so like uh, the the cop says to the lady, "All right, well, you said it was a gun. Uh, we actually we didn't find a gun, but we did find a knife." And she's like, yeah, I don't know, I just thought it was a gun or a knife or some kind of paraphernalia. I'm like, I don't think that's what that word means, but we're <laughs> like, yeah, it could have been a gun or weed, I don't know. <laughs> like, it could have been a rocket launcher or a joint, like they kind of look the same. <laughs> and he's just like a, you know, he's a cop, so he's like, no, I get it, man, like... <laughs> Yeah, guns always look like things, like <laughs> vice versa. <I'm> like, <laughs> cell phones. You probably thought it's a cell phone. Um, <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so <laughs> anyway, and uh, I look at her because I'm just flabbergasted that she was eating pizza after that. And I said, dude, how could you just like stuff your face 
after you thought there's an active shooter situation going on. And she just looks at me and goes, yeah, I know, right? So anyway, <laughs> like, keeps talking to the cop. Then I thought, that's the most American thing I've ever heard of, is eating pizza while there's an active shooter. <laughs> it does not get more American than that. Uh, and so anyway, I... <laughs> Uh, I, then uh, my other boss comes up and she's like, Parker, why did you go through the emergency exit? <laughs> what are you? I need to call the alarm company now. I don't realize, think you realize how shitty this is to me. <laughs> and like, and yeah, so I, I told the cop, I'm like, I'm probably just going to like cuss these people out. Like, I'm not going to assault anyone, you know. And uh, I do that. I cuss them out and I'm leaving and uh, my manager says, you know what, Parker? You know what? Just go. I'm like, yeah, I was going to. <laughs> like, I wasn't going to cuss you out, then, like, chill for a bit. <laughs> like, fuck you. Your mom's a cunt. Are you running any specials here? I have a coupon. I don't. <laughs> like, I, Man, this story was too intense. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, fuck. Okay. Um, <laughs> it was scary. I'll give it that. <laughs> it's scary. Um, so anyway, almost done. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So now here's the thing, though, is that I'm kind of scared that I will be in like an active shooter situation, in that I won't believe it. I'll be like, ah, I'm not falling for that again. You know, <laughs> like, like ha, ha, this Joker mask comes right off. Like, <laughs> okay, sorry you didn't like me. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Parker Newman, everybody, yeah. All right. When I started this show, uh, the idea was scary stories from crazy people and. The next comedian, there's no other way to describe him from, but just scary stories from the craziest person I've ever met. Make it real loud for the, your last comedian of the night, Ethan Albers, everybody. Oh, man. Yeah, give it up for Drew one more time. Oh, man. Hell, let me get to, let me get the lighting and uh, the microphone. Did he turn it off? No, he didn't. All right. What's going on? That's a, that's a weird way to advertise I have mental illness, by the way, wasn't that, guys? <laughs> He's just like... Yeah, this next guy, is, uh, he's on a spectrum. He definitely has fucking mental illness. What's going on? All right. Scary fucking now. Nah, we're not going to do that. Fuck that. All right. All right. We, uh, round of applause. Round of applause if you have a friend you should cut out of your life. Oh, real honest. Okay, fuck off. Okay. <laughs> If he's not, if you're not applauding, then you clearly ha you clearly are the guy that most people want to cut <laughs> out of your fucking life, right? We all I think it's healthy, right? You get older, you get, like you get. I'm fucking 33, like I just start start fucking just cutting them, dude, left and right. You outgrow people, you outgrow, you do. My buddy Matt is that way. My buddy Matt, like I've cut him out of my life like five fucking times, five times, and every time it's like the Godfather. He keeps pulling me back in, okay? Pulls me back in every single time. And I'll tell you the, the last time Matt pulled me in permanently. Uh, it was when I was living in Portland, Oregon, still. Surprise, like a white guy with a beard and a beanie, bro, from Portland. What? Nah. -uh. Yeah, dude, that's where I'm from. Okay. Um, I was living in Portland, Oregon, and he was living two blocks away from me in a duplex. Uh, and he shows up drunk to my house at noon and goes, We're getting a free alligator. And I'm like, What? What? He goes, we're getting a free alligator. I'm like, never leave me, Matt. Never leave me. Never leave me. So this motherfucker, he's like, I need to drive. Dude, we got to go to this free alligator. We got to go do it. I was like, yeah, okay, dude, fuck yes. I'll drive you, dude. So I drove him in my Volvo station wagon. Here's the thing about Portland, if you guys never been there, okay? Portland's like all trendy and like fucking dudes look like me and like bicycles. And in like 20 minutes, any direction, it's the fucking south, dude. It's the most redneck, narrow-minded fucking backwoods fucking place. Just white trailer parks. It's fucking wonderful if you're a black guy. Go there once and just go watch it. It's just miserable, just white misery. It's wonderful. But uh, <laughs> it's just wonderful. That's what it is. But I, uh, so we show up to this, like, we show up to this house. Of course, it's on Craigslist. Of course, it's on, on the free section of Craigslist. So we're dri driving there, and I'm thinking, like, I'm thinking about, like, trying to get a car. 
Like, I'm like, okay, like, we're not going to just, like, grab any, like, shit fucking alligator. Like, we're going to look at it, like, you know, make sure it checks oil. I don't know. It's be fucking weird. Just thinking about it. We show up, and none of that happens. Instead, this woman comes running out of a trailer with a three-foot alligator and just passes it to me like it's in a line of scrimmage. So I'm just holding the fucking alligator. This little tiny little fucker. Look at my buddy Matt like I'm going to fucking kill you, dude. What the fuck did you get me into? And but I like look at it, it's like wagging his tail and has his like dead little eyes, like doll eyes. I'm like, this thing's adorable, dude. It might be onto something. It's adorable. It's not a big one. We'll full grow three foot now. So we stuff it into the station wagon and we drive, we drive back home. Uh, and that's why I realized like we're, I'm driving back to his duplex. I'm like, where the fuck are you gonna let an alligator live at, Matt? And he's like, just in my garage, dude. Just in there, like with your bow flex and shit. Like in there, like that's where it's gonna live. He's like, it's just gonna live in my garage, dude. This clearly poor fucking planning on every part with this dude, okay? So we show up, open up the hatch of my Volvo, and the motherfucker's just like, uh, I mean, I've never seen like an alligator strike until like this moment. Like clearly he was in a striking position because alligators don't like going for car rides. So now we gotta figure out how to get an alligator out of the back of a fucking Volvo that's just chomping and shit at us. Three feet's not a lot, but face off against a three foot fucking alligator in the back of your vo Volvo, and tell me you got the fucking balls like you're going and whatever. All right. <laughs> so we managed to get it out of there. Like with a broom and shit, we like shoot in there, and he just pushes couches around, like to make it like a little pen in his garage, like dirty couches. He's like, ah, home sweet home. He like closes it. I'm like, you're a fucking psycho, dude. You're like, whatever. And I didn't think anything of it until maybe three or four months in to him having this alligator, and he shows up my house, drunk again, and goes, uh, man, fucking alligators, dude, they eat a lot. I don't know if you know that. I'm like, yeah, dude, we're going to fucking kill this thing, finally make some boots out of it. We're going to do this? What are we going to do? And he goes, no, 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 man, I figured out how to feed this, this alligator for free. I'm like, what? He goes, well, I got to, oh, no. <laughs> Hold on. He goes, well, I got a BB gun, and the neighborhood has a pigeon problem. So he starts shooting pigeons, not killing them, because alligators won't eat anything that's dead. He starts feeding live pigeons to an alligator in his garage in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. And this is like, he doesn't keep this thing. He, after he starts that, he goes full, like, weird southern dude. He starts walking this thing through the fucking neighborhood, and he's getting laid. Women are fucking this guy. Because it's Portland. Women are in the weird shit there, dude. They're like, oh, you're fucking expressing yourself. Eh. Like, they're just doing that. They're going crazy and shit there for this fucking alligator. For months, this goes on. And then one day he shows up, drunk to my house again. Fucking catching a rhythm here. You guys getting a rhythm. And he goes, man, he's like, he's upset. He's like, I'm getting evicted, man. I'm getting evicted from my place. I'm like, oh, why, Matt? Why? Why are you getting evicted? He goes, well, the landlord came in, man. Uh, came in to check the hot water heater because it's leaking in the unit next door. Alligator attacks landlord. Oh. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, what are we going to do? And he goes, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a different apartment. I'm like, what? <laughs> so he starts applying for apartments. And under pet, he starts writing alligator. How many places do you think he got? Fucking zero. He got zero. The day he got the alligator for free, it was the day to, day it was against the law to domesticate him in the state of Oregon. So he's got like a, like this woman just got rid of an illegal pet. That's what she did. You can't domesticate alligators, dude. You can't have them. At least in Oregon and Washington. So I, he starts coming. He's like, I don't know what to do, man. He's like, I'm a, he's, I was like, dude, let's fucking kill it. Make some fucking boots finally. <laughs> And he goes, no, nah, dude, I'm going to turn it back to its natural habitat. <laughs> I'm like, this is Portland, Oregon, dude. Where, where are you fucking? He goes, don't worry, I'll take care of it, okay? Right? Couple, maybe three days past. He goes, don't worry, I returned it back. I'm like, where'd you drop it off? The fucking mall, dude? The nearest habitat's 2,000 miles away from here. He goes, I was like, that alligator's fucking dead. We should just made boots out of it or whatever. He goes, nah, dude, don't worry about it. It returned back. I thought I'd never know what happened to Mr. Alligator. So literally like the next day. I was coming out of my convenience store, and guess who's on the front of the newspaper? <laughs> Mr. Alligator. Well, it turns out Matt went out and dropped it in a swamp outside of Portland, like about 35, 40 minutes. But he didn't drop it in any swamp. He dropped it in a protected duck sanctuary, <laughs> and the thing just started eating birds <laughs> like he's been training to do for the last year and a half. $10,000 reward leading the rest of the prosecution, my friend. 
What do you think I did? What do you think I did? What did I do? Did I turn him in? No, exactly. I think we're a little confused here. I got to go back a little bit. No, the alligator got returned to a sanctuary. I'll go ahead and clear that up. I love you, though, by the way. Uh, there's a $10,000 fine or a reward for my friend Matt for turning him in because it was like a class, it was like a big felony. It's like environmental. That's a pretty big deal to kill a bunch of protected birds, you know. I did turn him in. I didn't turn him in. You know why? Because I got to see how this motherfucker dies, right? If this is how he's alive now, how is this guy going to go out? Spaceship? What the fuck? Bomb? I don't know. You keep people like that. That's what you do. Okay, that's been weird. Give it up for your host. All right. Hey, Ethan Albers, everybody. Yeah. Parker Newman, Ruby Setnick, Jason B., Colin Waters, Lundy West. I've been Drew Rapture. We do this show... Fuck this flashlight. Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm going to have a goddamn eye patch by the time I'm done running the show. Uh, we run the show the first Friday of every single month. The next one will be December 6th. I'll be bringing great comedians with uh, scary stories again. Uh, you guys have been a lot of fun. Thank you for eating all my snacks. Uh, shout out Trader Joe's. Have a good one. <laughs>